Hello. My name is David Rhodes and I am the Chairman of the Reserve Forces and Cadets Association for Yorkshire and the Humber. And we have the privilege of hosting the Lord Lieutenant's Award Ceremony for North Yorkshire, which I'm delighted to tell you comes from the Queen's Own Yeomanry Barracks here in York. And we couldn't be more pleased to be joined here today by Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant of North Yorkshire, Joe Rockner in honouring some of the county's truly outstanding volunteers and cadets. Mrs. Ropner has been chosen by Her Majesty the Queen as her very own representative in North Yorkshire. And the awards that she bestows are the highest honours that any citizen can receive, other than those conferred directly by Her Majesty in the New Year and the Birthday Honours Lists. We'll be making awards to reservists, to cadet adult volunteers and to cadets themselves. The awards that the Lord Lieutenant makes to our reservists and cadet adult volunteers are not made lightly. They're only awarded to volunteers who have provided a lifetime of service or who have undertaken a specific or outstanding act or contribution or they are our unsung heroes. We have around 2,500 reservists here in Yorkshire. They serve in local units of the Royal Naval Reserve, the Royal Marines Reserve, the Army Reserve, and the Royal Air Force Reserve. And these reservists combine full-time careers in civilian life with vital roles within the military. If they're mobilized for full-time operational duty, they carry out the same tasks and to the same high standards as their regular counterparts and they also receive the same world-class training and develop the same skills. All in all, our reservists make up around a seventh of the UK's total defence capacity and they are an essential part of our national defence strategy. And I'm delighted that our Lord Lieutenant is recognising four of the county's reservists this evening. Our cadet forces are among Britain's oldest youth organisations and they consist of the Sea Cadet Corps, the Army Cadet Force, the Air Training Corps and the schools-based combined cadet forces. They provide an opportunity for young people around the county to undertake challenging activities and gain qualifications in things like BTEC and the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme. We have over 8,000 cadets and adult volunteer instructors here in Yorkshire and the Humber and around 200 cadet training centres. To keep all of this going relies of course upon the many cadet force adult volunteers who give up their spare time to manage and train the cadets and are the beating heart of the cadet movement. Finally, I'd like to say a few words about our Lord Lieutenant Cadets. Each year we take the opportunity to select three cadets, one from each of our sea, army and air cadet forces, to act as Lord Lieutenant Cadets for the forthcoming year. Each cadet will accompany and assist the Lord Lieutenant in her duties over the course of the year and will be hearing from three outstanding cadets at this ceremony who have been selected for this duty for the forthcoming year. So I think that's quite enough from me. The most important people are those receiving the awards. So now I'd like to introduce you to Colonel David Fuller, who in turn is going to tell you all about and introduce you to our award recipients. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. We have some amazing people here to recognise, and I would like to first start with our four reservist recipients. Private Andrew Thurkill, 4th Battalion, the Yorkshire Regiment. A senior private of great experience and ability, Private Thurkill has served in the Army Reserve for 16 years and is both an excellent soldier and ambassador for his unit. He began his reserve career with a deployment in Iraq and has been on various international exercises since. Private Thurkill has a willingness to step up to the mark and get on with the task at hand, even under difficult circumstances. This selfless commitment was seen in the role he played to help the flood efforts in West Yorkshire, in addition to the way he conducted himself 
while helping to operate mobile testing units across the region as part of the COVID-19 response. Private Thurkill has been involved with the Army Cadet Force in the region, where he holds the rank of Colour Sergeant as the Adult Training Instructor for C Company, Yorkshire North and West Army Cadet Force. He is greatly respected within those circles and known for his ability as an instructor. It is a truly commendable effort which is worthy of recognition. <laughs> Flying Officer David Cuthbertson, Yorkshire University's Air Squadron. Flying Officer Cuthbertson is a volunteer reserve officer on the strength of nine air experience flight at RAF Linton on Ouse, North Yorkshire. He joined the AEF in 2013 following a long career in aviation, serving as a Royal Air Force fast jet pilot and latterly as a commercial pilot with Monarch. He has been an outstanding volunteer pilot on 9 AEF for the last six years. He is always willing to give up his free time in order to support the cadet forces for their flying. Flying Officer Cuthbertson's patience and generosity make him a favourite pilot of the cadets. He can be thoroughly relied upon to complete the task in the most professional manner whilst making it fun. His flying ability, professionalism and contagious enthusiasm make him an outstanding example of Royal Air Force qualities and values. <laughs> Sergeant Jennifer Jeffels, 609 West Riding Squadron, Royal Auxiliary Air Force. Sergeant Jeffels joined the Royal Air Force in 1989 and qualified as a personnel administrator. She was promoted to corporal in 1998 and served in Northern Ireland, Iraq, former Yugoslavia and Afghanistan. Promoted to sergeant in 2006, she joined 609 Squadron as a full-time reservist on leaving regular service in 2013. Sergeant Jeffels is a trained community volunteer, trauma incident management practitioner and visiting officer and her skills have been indispensable when called upon to deal with two recent tragedies at RAF Leeming. She led her team to help support the mobilisation of 13 Squadron in support of the military's response to COVID-19. She is an outstanding senior non-commissioned officer and richly deserves Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant's Award. <laughs> Acting Sergeant Keith Wood, 609 West Riding Squadron, Royal Auxiliary Air Force. Acting Sergeant Wood joined the Royal Air Force as a regiment gunner in 1985 and during his first posting to the Queen's Colour Squadron was a member of the team which broke the world record for continuity drill display. He later trained for rapier air defence and was deployed to both Northern Ireland and the First Gulf War. He cut short his regular service in 1993 to care for his then wife who was seriously ill. Acting Sergeant Wood joined 609 Squadron in 2005 and in 2009 became a full-time reserve soldier on the squadron training team. In 2014, he trained as a Mastiff vehicle commander, deploying to Camp Bastion in Afghanistan on the final Op Herrick tour. In addition to being a qualified small arms weapon instructor and first aid instructor, he is in charge of the station heritage facility, the squadron bar, and even manages the squadron mascot, a British Toggenberg goat called William de Goat II. For his attitude and passion to both his role and the unit, he is highly recommended for this award. <laughs> and now we turn to our Cadet Force Allied Volunteer recipients. Sub-Lieutenant Gareth Davis, Scarborough Unit, Eastern Area Sea Cadet Corps. Sub-Lieutenant Davis works continuously to help cadets locally and nationally and is always thinking of new ways in which he can improve their training. After a career in the regular army and then as a full-time reservist at the Defence School of Transport at Leckenfield, he dedicates all his spare time to his role as Executive Officer 
at Scarborough Sea Cadets. His commitment to the unit has helped it to become the best in the UK and he pushes the cadets to be the very best they can be. In addition to his work for the unit, he is a key part of the area training team, helping to develop training for both adult volunteers and cadets. He also volunteers to deliver training at the National Sea Cadet Training Centres. Sub Lieutenant Davis's can do attitude is infectious and gives everyone the drive to see things through. Sub Lieutenant Gareth Davis is highly deserving of the Lord Lieutenant's Award. <laughs> Lieutenant Paul Mathers, Yorkshire North and West Army Cadet Force. Lieutenant Mathers has dedicated 16 years to the Army Cadet Force and has been a commander of three detachments in addition to being a staff officer within company headquarters. Within each of the posts he has held, he has excelled. He has given quite literally hundreds of hours to ensure cadets and adult volunteers have the best possible training and development opportunities. For example, he recently completed a minibus driving course so that his current detachment could attend more events. This has also benefited hugely the company as a whole. As the company's adult development officer, he mentors and trains new adults through their induction process, sharing his expertise and best practice. He does all this alongside a full-time job as a behavioural support worker and having a young supportive family. He's a perfect candidate for the prestigious honour of a Lord Lieutenant's Award. Squadron Leader Paul Crabtree, Central and East Yorkshire Wing Air Training Corps. Squadron Leader Paul Crabtree is a highly enthusiastic and committed member of the Royal Air Force Air Cadets. Following his appointment as a civilian instructor, he was quickly commissioned and became Officer Commanding 2431 Keithley Squadron in the rank of Flight Lieutenant. He improved the squadron so much that it was twice chosen as the Wing's nomination for the Sir Alan Lees Trophy for being the best squadron in the country. After being appointed as a sector commander in the rank of squadron leader, he introduced an innovative sector-wide training programme to ensure all cadets in the units he oversaw had access to the full range of opportunities. In March this year, he was appointed Deputy Officer Commanding Central and East Yorkshire Wing, in addition to Wing Fieldcraft Officer. His commitment and drive provides an excellent example for both staff and cadets to follow and he is much deserving of this award. <laughs> Squadron Leader Stephen Parks, Central and East Yorkshire Wing Air Training Corps. Squadron Leader Parks has a passion for ensuring that all staff and cadets have the best opportunities the air cadets have to offer. He has a particular love of shooting, an area in which he excels, and provides a wide range of opportunities for both staff and cadets to participate in. He developed the new Skill at Arms Instructor course for North Region, and during his time as a member of the Small Arms Training Team, he attended wing shooting events and led shooting activities at the wing's annual field camp. Squadron Leader Parks took his unit to the final stages of the Lees Trophy to be named the best squadron in the country. He was recently appointed as Wing Shooting Officer and is highly deserving of the honour of the Lord Lieutenant's Award. <laughs> Flight Lieutenant George Clemetshaw, Whitby Squadron, Central and East Yorkshire Wing Air Training Corps. Flight Lieutenant Clemetshaw is a calm, conscientious officer who is well respected by cadets and staff alike and undertakes his duties in a highly professional manner. As a squadron commander, Flight Lieutenant Clementshaw took on the role at a difficult time for 740 Whitby Squadron, but has made the unit one of the best within the wing, building strong links with the local community. He has taken on a number of other roles in support of the wing, becoming the Wing Health and Safety Advisor 
which has seen a rise in cadets participating in the Cadet Entry Level Award in Health and Safety, together with being the project officer for the Wing's ongoing exchange programme with the New Hampshire Wing of the US Civil Air Patrol. He continually demonstrates the highest standards expected of a commissioned officer in the Royal Air Force Air Cadets. And now for our cadet recipients. Leading cadet Alfie Allen, Scarborough Sea Cadets, Eastern Area Sea Cadets. Corporal Harry McDonough, Fulford Detachment, Yorkshire North and West Army Cadet Force. And cadet warrant officer Sarah Silva, 58 Harrogate Squadron, Central and East Yorkshire Wing, Air Training Corps. Hello, my name is Lean Cadet Alfie Allen. I have lived in Scarborough my whole life and I'd like to tell you what Sea Cadets means to me. As a child, I went dancing and to various performing arts classes. I used to love trains and would go to see them with my granddad at every chance I could. However, my interest faded and I tried find, finding something else I liked. Me and my granddad used to go on pleasure cruises around the bays of Scarborough and I soon found out that I had found my passion for ships. Maybe because there was more freedom than with railways as ships can go anywhere with water. After we went on a cruise on Armed Forces Day, a sea cadet gave me a leaflet and I did not hesitate to ask my mum if I could join as soon as I got home. And of course, she said yes. This was one of the biggest decisions I made at the time. Throughout my time at Sea Cadets, my family have supported me every step of the way. They have given me lifts to our boating station, or the unit, and even come to see me at parades and events. They are watching at home tonight. Hello. As my grandma says, your grandpa would be so proud of you. He was a former communications chief in the Royal Navy. Sea Cadets has given me the confidence for everything I do. I was bullied in primary school, but Cadets gave me the resilience to carry on in tough times. Cadets has also given me an immense sense of pride, just like when we marched past the Cenotaph last year. Sea Cadets has given me the opportunity to travel and gain experience that not many people my age will, would ever get, like participating in firefighting, steering a ship at 4am in big swells, parading by, behind the Coldstream Guards and flying a plane doing loop to loops something I cannot forget. Also being able to have the chance to go offshore and see dolphins and whales as well as seals and thousands of tiny jellyfish. And to be able to have the opportunity to participate in the Sea Cadets National Drill Competition showing the Royal Navy what Sea Cadets can do. In my opinion, Sea Cadets has given me a major step up not only with my career but in life with various qualifications such as first aid, Duke of Edinburgh, water sports and leadership skills, such as teaching, which some people may never be able to do. The best thing that Cadets has given me is friendships, that I can truly call friendships. Without these friends today, I don't think I would be able to be who I am today. Before I finish, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for listening and to thank every cadet and staff member that has helped me with my life in Sea Cadets. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cadet Sergeant McDonough. I'm 16 years old and from Fulford Detachment B Company. My biggest inspiration for joining the Army Cadet Force was my older brother, Taylor McDonough. After leaving Scouts, he tried to convince both me and my twin brother to join the cadets. My brother was not so fond of the idea, but I was willing to give it a chance. The thing I enjoy most about being a cadet is the sense of community and friends I've made along the way. They're the type of people who make every experience a positive one and make activities such as camping in the cold, bearable, even enjoyable. My future plans in the Army Cadet Force are to achieve the rank of Company Sergeant Major and to complete my Master Cadet course. Academically, my aim is to obtain A-levels in Design and Technology and Psychology. For my future career, my goal is to become a police officer and participate in as many roles as I can. This career would allow me to put to good use the leadership and communication skills 
I have gained in the Army Cadet Force. My cadet experience has also helped me overcome my fears of speaking to new people, of stepping into the spotlight, and helped develop my leadership skills. Later, I would also like to come back as a Cadet Force adult volunteer in order to inspire the next generation of cadets. Thank you. I'm Cadet Warrant Officer Sarah Silver. I'm at Central East Yorkshire Wing and I'm located at 58 Harrogate Squadron. I joined Cadets at the end of 2016 and I've thoroughly adored my time since. I was 14 years old when I got told from a friend from school about Cadets. She mentioned what she had done and accomplished with her time in the organisation and soon after she became someone I looked up to. After an induction night, I clearly must have loved my time as, I was, I, as I'm still here four years later. The evening was filled with laughter as cadets enjoyed getting to know each other, and I still very much vividly remember that day. I was then asked what I enjoyed, what I enjoy most about cadets, and I found this to be quite difficult, as cadets have so much to offer, a lot to teach and to learn. For the, for the first year, I mainly got involved in squadron-based activities. I was a really shy kid with a serious lack of confidence, mostly due to English being my second language. But it didn't take me long to realise how welcoming and homely cadets made me feel. After that, I can truly say I learned to spread my wings. I took part in several voluntary roles, such as the Royal British Legion, Rafa Wings Appeal, Battle of Britain Parade, Yorkshire Show, Race for Life, and so much more. By doing so, my confidence increased, as I was put in a, in a position where I was more or less forced to talk to people. Camps, weekend camps, squadron weekend camps, Flying, First Aid, Cyber, Duke of Edinburgh, Leadership are just some activities that I've had the absolute pleasure to take part in. The greatest thing about being an Air Cadet is that you have unlimited activities or experiences that you can take part in. I never thought I'd be able to casually spend a day with the Mayor of Harrogate representing my squadron, but hey, we spent a whole day together. I also created my own project, the Blue Heart Wellbeing Project. Where, where I explored how young people can positively impact elderly individuals with dementia. This is a project that I am really, really proud of. Ultimately, I enjoy how much of a difference I can now make. If, if somebody asked me what Cadets has given me, I would say the biggest thing has been complete, completing Gold First Aid. I have taught so many young people life-saving skills. It always, always mean, brings me so much happiness when a cadet tells me that what I've taught them has impacted somebody else. Cadets has given me the opportunity to meet some amazing people who I cherish greatly. A true family in a lot of aspects. Cadets have ultimately led me to my career path. I am currently taking a gap year and working at Farndale Ward at Harrogate Hospital, which so far has been an incredible experience. Working in healthcare is a hard job in itself, but add a pandemic to the mix and, and it really does spice things up. I want to continue to grow as an individual, but also increase my medical training by taking observations, blood and inserted cannulas, as well as continue to teach with the air cadets. I will be going to university next year to study nursing, and I simply cannot wait to see what the future holds. Thank you. And now I'd like to hand over to Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant for North Yorkshire, Mrs. Jo Ropner. Thank you, Colonel David, and good evening. This event, our first totally digital Lord Lieutenant Award ceremony, would never have been thought possible a year ago. But it is wonderful and so very important that we have been able to achieve this. In order to mark such a special occasion as recognising the service and commitment of reserves, adult volunteers and cadets in North Yorkshire. Thank you to all those involved in putting together this digital ceremony. In my own limited experience, I know they take a huge amount of extra work to pull off. Having listened to the citations, what you all have achieved has been inspiring. You have given selflessly of yourselves, both to your units and local communities. 
in order to make our society stronger and better, whether it be in the cadet force adult volunteering, enabling and encouraging our reserves and cadets, or indeed the remarkable work of the permanent staff of the reserve units. None of this goes unnoticed. In turn, I must also thank the families of our cadets, who I know dedicate many hours and weekends to their cause. I would also like to thank all the civilian employers of our reserves, those businesses who support the military, some of whom have signed up to the employer recognition scheme under the Armed Forces Covenant. Without their help, encouragement and support, none of this would have been achieved. And we have seen through COVID just how impressive our reserves have been in many areas of society. Hearty congratulations to every one of you for this richly deserved recognition. I sincerely hope I may have the opportunity to meet with you in person once government rules deem this possible. I would like to turn to my three incredibly impressive Lord Lieutenant Cadets, Alfie, Harry and Sarah. I very much enjoyed reading your nominations, which only made me even more disappointed I was not to meet you properly today. Your enthusiasm and diligence shine through and I shall very much look forward to working alongside you when possible. You and your families should all be hugely proud of your achievements and you will be presented on my behalf with your certificate and badge. Wear the badge with pride, you have justly deserved it. Usually your first event with me would have been on Remembrance Sunday. Sadly, I fear, with so many restrictions, cadets, along with many others, may not be permitted to attend. We need to hope that with a fair wind, I will be able to call upon you in 2021. Thank you all once again for your service, commitment, and shining example to others. All of you are heroes within your communities, the backbone of society. We are lucky to have you.